Hi, this is Scott Whitley from Big Country, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. I love the way you talk. Cheers, man. Thank you. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you today from the 2018 NAM Show, Anaheim, California, at the GHS booth with GHS artist and big country bass player, Scott Whitley. Hello, Scott. How are you doing? Good. You're a long way from home, aren't you? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it was a long flight, I could tell you that. But uh, glad to be here. Welcome to the U.S. We are glad to have you. Want to talk about you and your gear and your uh, your equipment and all that stuff, but let's start from the early days. Tell me about your initial exposure to music and how you became a bass player in the first place. Okay, well, I, I actually started as a drummer. Um, and then you became a musician. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Almost. sorry, drummers. Almost. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we formed a band at school and there was nobody to play bass, so I kind of got pushed onto the bass and thought, well, I'll do this for a while and then get back on the drums. Um, and then I saw a chap called Mark King, who's, who was with a band called Level 42. I know that chap. I've interviewed that chap. He's a very nice chap. And a, yes, he is. And an awesome player. Uh, and that was it. It was like an instant thing. It was like, bass is cool, you know, and, and, and that was... Um, Met him in a pub <laughs> in, in uh, <laughs> London, by near the Olympia Centre across right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was it, really, and then from there, I kind of discovered other players like, of course, Jacko, uh, Stu Ham, who's just performed here, um, Billy Sheehan, and all those kind of guys, and, and of course, back there, back then, uh, and, and Stanley Clark, a huge influence as well. There weren't that many, if you like, solo bass players, and they really stood out to me, and, and, um, and that was my main reason for getting into playing, yeah. So, but you said, a very common story, you became a bass player because nobody else wanted to do it or there was no bass player. There were always plenty of guitar players. Were there, in your case, also plenty of drummers that could fill in? Well, that's it. You know, I mean, I think, I think traditionally uh, bass players get a tough, um, a tough game because people see it as a slightly boring instrument, you know, the, the, the people who don't know. Um, and of course, it's you know it, it's it's such an important instrument. It's it's percussion and um, and melody at the same time. You know, it's uh, and harmony and harmony. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you're talking to people who understand us. Of course, I'm preaching to the converted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the big country gig. That must be a uh, big big uh, deal for you. It is, um, it, it, particularly as they were one of the bands I used to watch when I was young. Um, alongside Level 42 and Tony Butler, the original bass player, fascinated me because in the 80s um, it wasn't very hip to be playing with a pick, you know, on the bass. Still isn't sometimes, but uh, and he was a pick player and that kind of really fascinated me, the fact that there was all this slap thing going on and all the rest of it and he carried on doing his pick thing. A phenomenal bass player. Um, so when the gig came up, um, I had to really pull out the, the pick chops, you know, I wanted to get that kind of tone. It's a very particular tone that he gets. Um, so yeah, it's a big deal and I, I feel honoured to do it. Um, and uh, it's, You've been with the band, what, about three years or so? It's just coming up to three years now, yeah. Yeah, we've toured uh, the UK extensively, we, we do a lot of, in Europe. We're just off to Australia next month, you know, so it's... How about the US? We'd love to come back to the US. I think the last time they toured was... Uh, about 2012 or something like that. So it's definitely on the cards. It's time. It is time, definitely, yeah. Tell me about your gear. So the gear I use, um, I'm a bit traditional amp-wise. I, I use um, uh, a Trace Elliott um, rig, two four tens. I like the speed of the tens, you know, the, the responsiveness. Um, and bass guitar-wise, I'm actually playing my own signature model, which is it's, it's my own design. Um, and the, the thing that's special about it, I guess, it's not unusual, but it's a short scale bass. It's the Chowney bass, right? It's a Chowney one. It's called the Chowney SWB1. Um, and really, really briefly, the, the, the history behind that was that early in my career, I played a short scale bass in a music shop and fell completely in love with the, um, the feel, the feel of it. And the, t the tone acoustically, you know, straight from the in instrument. But I could never find anything on the market that ticked all the boxes other than that, you know, the, the, the pickup configuration wasn't right or it was too kind of 
retro sounding or you know I, I think the only one that would, would really have ticked the boxes was like the, the stand clock alembics that sort of thing but at the time they were way out of my price you know range um, and so over the years I de developed my own designer base and it's borrowed a lot from you know obviously um, other basses I've played and that's the SWB1 what kind of strings do you put on that bass? Well, would you believe GHS strings? Yeah. You better say GHS, because as I mentioned, we're sitting here in the GHS booth. How, lo how long have you been playing G uh, GHS, and why do you like them so much? I've been playing GHS for about two years, I think. Um, and I came across GHS because uh, I have a, a website that, that specializes in everything short scale. You know, I've got articles on there about it and stuff. and. I wrote uh, an article, uh, quite a long article, about string choice for short scale basses because with a short scale, um, it, it's kind of like it, it kind of amplifies, if you like, or magnifies the difference between different strings. So if you've got if you've got a bad set of strings on a short scale, they sound really bad, you know. How short are we talking here? It's not great. It's, it's what you would call the standard short scale, thirty point seven five, but it does make a huge difference. It's like the bass is more picky about what strings are going to sound good. And um, so I wrote this article, and Jonathan Moody yes. um, from GHS actually got in touch with me and said, "Listen, do you want to try some real bass strings on that thing?" You know, and he sent me over some um, the stainless round wounds, okay. uh, super steels, ah. to to try along with some others, and instantly fell in love with them. Like hands down, the best strings I've had on my short scale basses. You know, they're, they're great. John's a great guy too. Hey, John. What about the future? What else is in store? Is there something that's coming up you can share with us? Or is there something that you've always wanted to do and just haven't gotten around to yet? Uh, there's nothing specific. I, I guess 2018 is, is about... Um, I have a YouTube channel, which is, is growing. Uh, so I'm going to put as much work into that as I can. I do a lot of free, free lessons on there. So um, if you're a subscriber, there's more to come. Um, I'm... Obviously touring with, um, oh there is actually something quite big, I'm touring with Big Country and I'm also going to be touring in May and June with a band called Big Minds, right, which is a kind of fusion uh, of some of the guys from Big Country. You like big bands, huh? Yeah, all big, yeah, all big you know. And, um, How about Mr. Big? Mr. Big, that'll be alright, but I think there's a, another bass player. Yeah, that's I think that gig is taken. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, and, and it's basically Derek Forbes who was the original bass player from... Um, Simple Minds. So it's Simple Minds and, and Big Country, and, and we're going out... Big and simple. Big and simple. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Let me ask you one more question, Scott. Okay. What would you be if you weren't a bass player? Something outside of music. <sighs> wow. I, I think, actually, right now, I would be... We mean, non, if, if I wasn't a musician? Yeah. yeah a photographer. Wow. This is a new thing for me. But uh, it's, I'm quite passionate about it at the minute. So, yeah, yeah, probably a photographer, actually. Well, you've got the arts in your blood. It's the arts. That's what it is. It's a, yeah, it's a I get the picture. <laughs> and now, now we need a drummer for the rim shot. Scott Whitley, great getting to know you, catching up. Congratulations on all your success. And please let us know about anything with uh, Big Country or anything big or simple or anything else. And we will share that with our audience here at ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It was my pleasure, too. At the GHS booth at the 2018 Winter NAM Show, Anaheim, California, with Scott Whitley, I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com.